Hello guys and welcome back to my channel and um, my avid viewers will see that I'm in the shed again even though on my last video I said we'll be doing front wheel bearings on my car. Now we are going to be doing front wheel bearings on my car but we're in the shed at the moment to introduce this video for multiple reasons as you'll most likely be able to hear on the microphone. It is raining and it's really raining. Second reason is I've just been out and bought loads of parts for this car and the third and final reason is it's just i've needed to be in here to sort some tools out so i can do the job as well so i thought why not introduce it in the shed we're going to wait for it to hold off on the rain a little bit and hopefully fingers crossed that won't be too long and we'll get this uh, sorted let's get you set up so i can show you the parts i've ordered so guys just before i actually set the tripod up there's the whole pile of parts there um we've got the wheel bearings there and we have a completely tidy workbench because when we get the uh leg off of the car we will be bringing it in here to do the wheel bearings in here with my wheel bearing tool which you'll see later in the video let's get the tripod set up properly so i can actually show you these bits so guys the first thing we've got is a brand new thermostat we have a new seal brand new thermostat to go in that'll be part of the service that i do on the car as it goes in the engine yeah as the engine goes in the engine bay that can go over there We've also got brand new air filter, which would be one of the last pieces to the puzzle that we do. Brand new three piece clutch, some paperwork there. The uh, release bearing. Brand new clutch plate. All done by uh, Borg and Beck. And then the final piece as well. It sandwiches it all together. Some brand new gearbox oil we've got some uh, elf sport 1040 that's basically the oil they said my car has so five liters of that two liters of the other brand new fuel filter like i said in the last video i won't be the bother putting a fuel filter in because i knew i was going to get a new one i know it's only a part that is designed to filter oil but considering the color of my engine i didn't know this was going to come this color because normally they come that sort of color I know it's only going to be a functional part and the colour of it would have been irrelevant but it turns out it ends up being a blue one so happy days with that now onto the wheel bearings I do have two of these because we're doing both front wheel bearings it comes with a new clip for the drive shaft and it also comes with a new nut for the drive shaft those two bits won't be worried about for now because I have no drive shafts in the vehicle. It's got the circlip there that holds the bearing in place. And then we actually have the bearing itself as well that we're going to have to lubricate up and press into the hub. So the next clip you see guys will be out of the car with it jacked up and with the um, wheels off at the front. Then I will do a how to on removing the leg and we'll do the how-to of changing the wheel bearing what i'm actually going to do though is i'm going to go in have a cup of tea keep my fingers crossed that it, the weather dries up a bit and i will pick the camera back up when it does because i don't like getting wet unless i really really have to so be with you shortly guys so we got the wheels up on the jack just for now um just thought i'd show you this is literally the reason why we're doing it i don't know if you can see that but if i do that like that a lot of movement there shouldn't be any movement like that so we're going to get this wheel off and then we'll get this uh, leg off we'll get started on doing this so guys i've got the uh, card jacked up and then i've dropped it down onto its wheels i've got the wheel literally just underneath the car just there it's sitting on its wheels what we're going to do now is we're going to get this disc off and just so you can see better that's what we're literally working with the hub is completely totaled we gotta to get these two bolts out and if i try and undo them what will actually happen is the, it will just keep spinning i won't be able to undo it so my little trick for that is to get my pry bar in just like so put a wheel nut in and lock the pry bar into place with a wheel nut by doing that it will now stop the hub from rotating because the pry bar is in the way what we can do with that we can put this t30 torx bit in get this bolt this uh, little stub bolt here out like so and we can get the other little stub bolt out get them loosened first just like so that can come back off then we just take these out fully and then the disc will come off 
So guys, just here, I've already started loosening it off. We've got 17 mil that on there, like so. That'll come off just like that. And if we keep hit, if we hit that really hard there, that will bust the threads up. So what you do is there's a always hit where the bolt comes through, just like so. And then that drop down just like that. It basically you put an impact shock on there, which breaks this free. For now, we will put the nut back on there. And as you can see down the back here, we've got the bottom of the anti-roll bar link, which I've also started loosening. Got my needle nose vice grips on there because there is some flats on there for you to put a spanner on, which I believe is a 15 mil. But you need a really thin spanner or it's just really awkward. So I find actually positioning my needle nose vice grips on to the flats, I can then undo that nicely without it being too much of an issue. And just like so guys, that will come off just like that. Undo the vice grips. That will now wiggle free, he says. Just like so. And again, for now, we'll just put that nut on there. And now what we've got to do is we've got to get the pinch bolt out from the bottom here. And I'll reposition the camera so you can see that better. So guys, this is a 16 mil that I'm undoing here. And that should be able to just undo nicely, like so. That's the nut on that side. And if we turn it a little bit, we'll get better access to the other side. So now we're gonna get the uh, ball splitter in there and prise that apart. So that's now wedged in there nicely. We should be able to go down on a whack on it a couple of times down and we should be able to free that up. So we're completely free. And that is the bolt bottom one off now. So now guys, we've got to undo these top three here. These are 13 mils. And if you're wondering about the camera angle, yes, I've got no engine in the engine bay, so it makes it easier for me to do the camera angle. But we just literally crack these loose and get these out. As you'll be able to see, that's now dropped down on these two because I've got the last one left. This is where my hand is now going to go under here and hold the spring so it doesn't drop down. And just like that, it hasn't dropped on my toes because I grabbed it at the other side and all three bolts are out. So guys, we've got the, dry, the passenger side suspension leg there complete. That's gonna go out to the shed. That's all off from there. It's off from there as well. We've got the driver's side one out already. You didn't see me taking this one off on the camera because you don't need to show you the same thing twice. And um, we're now gonna go heading into the shed and start actually working on that. So guys, we're now in the shed. We've got the leg on the bench. I was gonna set you up on the tripod and show you how I get this out using my bearing puller kit, except I have come across a little minor problem. I can't use this bearing puller kit to do this. So um, I've got an alternative method, which I don't know if it'll work, but if it doesn't work, I won't be able to record it. And I'll just have to kind of cut back in when I've paid a friend of mine who's got a press to push them out because what we've got here is we've got the clip it's a bit gunky but you can just about see it that's the circle clip that needs to come out and then the bearing will go this way out towards the camera i can't push that through that way out because the actual hub itself won't go through there because it's bigger for obvious reasons so what we've got to do is we've got to get the hub out first before we do anything by pushing through that way and that's why I can't use the bearing puller kit. So I've got another alternative method that might work, but I'm gonna give it a go on one of the legs and then if it does work, I'll record me doing it and showing you guys an alternative way. If it doesn't work, I will just have to send these, um, take these down to my friend in the garage with a press and put this video on hold until he can fit me in to actually fit these bearings for me. Um, because I've got the legs off, he won't charge me that much to do it because he hasn't got to do all the work. He's just got to push them out and push them back in with his press. But we'll give it a go, see what happens, and then bring you back in a little while. So guys, we're out of the car. New wheel bearing in. This is all done. Um, there's no, basically, there's no more wobble in that. There's absolutely uh, good rotation on that. That's perfect. With a brand new wheel bearing in there. This one has had the brand new wheel bearing in. And this whole leg is already installed, just like so reason I didn't show you me putting the wheel bearings in, I um, took both suspension legs down to a friend of mine in town at his garage and he pushed them out and 
pressed them out and pressed them back in because these circlips were being an absolute nightmare. They were really quite stuck in there and it's just one of them things where I didn't feel like I could do it even with my um, bearing pullers and stuff. It has started raining so I'm going to try and get this uh, done as best I can before the rain really takes over. Well, wish me luck guys. So we just literally tucked the suspension leg underneath and up oh underneath not through the wing stupid idiot and we'll just literally hold that from underneath line that up like so that can go in there this is pretty awkward to be fair so that's that let's get them done up with a 13 mil socket so that's that bit done i'm going to try and put you on the uh, little tripod now underneath the car to save it getting too wet and you'll be able to see how i put the bottom piece together so we literally need to push this down and wedge that onto there. Wiggle it up so it sits nice and flush. This bolt should now fit through here, this pinch bolt, just like so. Then we just do this nut up like so on the other side. So basically we're gonna use a 16 mil spanner on one side, just on there. And then we're then gonna twist it slightly so we can get the socket in better on here. And we're going to use a 16mm socket to do this up and nice and tight on this side. That's all done guys, nice and tight. And um, let's get the steering rack on and the uh, anti-roll bar link on. So we're going to put the anti-roll bar link on now. This is a 17mm nut and a 4mm hex bit which we'll uh, put in there. But first of all what we'll do is we'll put it through the uh, centre arm there, like so. Just roll the nut on as far as we can by hand. What we're going to do is we are going to hold on to it nice and tightly with the uh, four mil hex bit on the ratchet and then do it up with, while holding it basically. Some people would say you can do hold on to it and do the ratchet just like that. But what I find with that is it does work, but you end up uh, twisting the ball. So I'd rather just do the, hold it steady and use the spanner. It takes longer but you don't end up running the risk of spinning the ball unnecessarily. So that's that done guys. Now we're gonna put the uh, outer tie rod on. Apologies guys, I'm gonna end the video here and I'm gonna put the outer tie rod back on which is literally just a 17 mil nut on there. And then I'm literally gonna put the disc back on which is a two T30 little Torx grub screws. And I'm just going to put the wheels back on and put it back on its wheels. Fortunately, I'm going to do that off camera because it has gone quiet, which is why I'm quickly nabbing this bit of time to video. If you could see the sky, the sky is really cloudy and not a very pleasant day today. I apologise for this and I also apologise for it being a week since my last video. But let's just say some personal demons caught up with me. Yeah, that's as far as I'm going to go with that. Yeah, so anyway, I'm going to leave this here. If you would like to see what I get up to outside of YouTube, you can follow me on Instagram. That's the ZX guy, same as YouTube, the YouTube channel. I'll also leave another one of my amazing videos up in this corner. And I will put my subscribe icon just in the bottom corner here. Take care, guys. Bye for now. See you in the next one.